Right, today I'm going to have a go at turning this um, fine silver, that's 0.999 fine silver, not sterling, which is 9.25, this is 999. A 1972 Munich Olympics mega medal type thing. Look how thin that is, it's incredible how thin that is. So, let's have a look here. Right, to celebrate the uh, Olympics 1972, it's got a lovely pattern around the outside. I'm now going to try and turn that into a lovely silver ring. That, if it works, should be beautiful. Let's get on with it. Now, one of the first things we have to do is to find the center of the coin. I've got a video on how to do that. But, you know, using one of these gadgets, it's called a center finder. Get three pound on eBay, something like that. Then you can find the center of anything circular from a tiny little sixpence to a great big whatever. So I'm just going to draw on that, turn it a bit, and do the same again, and again, until we get a point where all the lines cross. There we go. So that is the dead centre of the coin. Now all I have to do is to make sure I punch it dead centre. Half a millimetre out is okay, because I can sand that to perfection and make sure I've got a dead centre hole. So let's get punching. So I'm just going to go from the chart I've got on the wall, although it's for American coins, you'll see that this one fits nicely into the US half dollar. And depending what size of a band that I would like. Depends, of course, on the size of the punch. I'll perhaps go with the half inch, I think. Right, now I've made a slightly bigger dot in the middle, just so I can level it up. Now the thing is, putting that into the die to punch it, it's just gonna slip straight through. So, I'm going to have to use a card. I'm just going to sellotape that coin to the card. Also prevents me rubbing off the ink on the coin so I can keep dead centre. So uh, I'll just slot that in there. And while I just line this up, I want to make sure I get that absolutely perfect. Then I'll come back to you in a minute. Right, here we go. Now because the silver coin metal thing is a bit thin. This is going to need a bit of cleaning up around the, the hole. Right, that's through. Now let's see if we can get it out. Yay! There we go. Looks like that's very good. Anyway, what I need to do just to make sure, because I like to have within half a millimetre if I can, and now on one side it looks great, on the other side it looks slightly out. I like to have it within half a millimetre if I can, from side to side, and on one side it looks pretty good. On that side it looks slightly out, so I'm not really sure. What I'm just going to do, let's get my calipers. That needs deburring to get rid of that rough edge and annealing again as well with a flame. So on that side we've got 782, on that side 690. So we're almost a millimetre out from dead centre 748, 724, 674. So, right, so I need to take out three quarters of a millimetre on this edge. So before I completely file that burr off, I need to take some more off that edge, keeping the hole still circular. So I'll just do that to make sure it's perfect, then I'll come back. Right, I've just moved it to ready to press on my six ton press. I know six tons sounds absolutely ginormous for a fragile little coin like that. But we'll do it slowly in stages. If that coin just slips slightly to one side by a couple of degrees, you get a very flared side to the coin. 
and it's very difficult to correct without the right set of dies so it's best not to have that mistake in the first place to have to try and correct so it's watching that press very carefully there we go I don't think the coin is slipping but I can't afford to take the risk I'm just going to check it so that's what it looks like and then we'll carry on with the press this is pressing so easy because of course it's such a flimsy coin right that's the first press just a nice gentle one and now I'm just going to turn the camera off gently file around that edge once more and then anneal it again ready for a second press Okay, time for a second press and again I'll get some petroleum jelly. This time it fits into my ring reducer die nice and easily. In fact it's very spot on, perfect that. I'll put some Vaseline in there, again metal on metal. You need to make sure it's as less friction as possible. That looks good. And now this time slightly different because I'm going to use the six ton press again but very gently indeed and I'm going to use this resin cone make sure it's clean and make sure it's also got some petroleum jelly on I need to replace these because um, they're getting grooves on them with the press so they're not that good a quality I've got some steel ones coming very soon from someone and that will just sit in there now the first and the second press is really the most critical that's when you're likely to get a mistake when it's slightly to one side or the coin is not sitting perfectly square in the hole and you'll get a, fl a flare on one side of the coin which is very difficult to correct so we're going to do this very slowly and that will bottom out that's why I've got a gap between these because otherwise it will bottom out the resin cone will come through the press and I'm just going to do this very gently indeed keep my eye it's starting to slip so I need to get that out and you'll see now if I if I show you that it's gone down more on one side than the other so I just need to correct that right I'm just taking it down from this one to this one just to see if that will help it's a very fragile silver coin so I need to be very careful of this I don't want to split it or lose it during the press going okay I'm going to stop it there and take it out again and check it and I'm also I'm also going to anneal it again so I'm going to check this and also anneal it again you can never anneal it enough you can over anneal it do it too much but frequently but frequency wise you can never do it enough so I'm just going to do that and come back to it. and now if I just show you right so that's been annealed again that fits perfectly into the second hole 
and if I just drop that into there you'll see there's plenty of room to go to push that through so that the coin folds back onto the resin die and that's as far as we've got so far annealed and ready for this third push Right, there's contact. I'm going by the feel and I'm keeping my eye on it. There's not much resistance there, so I need to just take it out and check it again. This is the thinnest coin I've ever done, so I'm very, very over cautious on this one. But I think that looks alright. And it's stuck on the cone, so I'll just take a. It's stuck on the cone, so I'll just take a minute or two to free that up. It's simply just putting it onto the die like that and just giving it a gentle tap. And it comes out. So, still got a way to go, and I'll anneal it once more. Okay, we're getting there. That hole's getting bigger and bigger, but that's okay because we can use the reducer to get that down to the size we want as long as we're careful. The whole idea is to make sure we don't ruin any of the pattern on the inside or the outside. Right, continue pressing. Gone up now to the next resin size. That cone is the second out of three. We might not need the third one. And it's now getting to the stage where it may not now slip. But I'm still going to keep my eye on it, just in case. Now that's looking good. Feels good. I just need to hope now that it comes out as good as it felt. You can see now there's no more gap around the outside. So we'll take that out and we'll see where we've got to. That's pretty good. Yep, I'm happy with that for the next stage, which is what? You've got it. We've got to anneal it again. Right, I think that's now ready for the next stage. We've lost a lot of detail on there because of the fire burn residue. We can clean that off later and I'll bring it all back. The most important thing now is to get the tapered edge as wide as the top edge without it splitting. That is the next most difficult thing. So, so far, if I just recap, it's getting a hole to be dead center and it has to be dead centered to make sure it comes out right and if it's not then you have to file it it's best if you punch it accurately the first time and then annealing and folding in two or three or four stages as many as it takes slowly and often to get to where you want to be which is there and the next thing to do is another anneal and then on the ring stretcher which will stretch that piece to match that piece. Now, the problem with these is when you adjust the ring stretcher, the splines come out to stretch the ring and the ring falls down a bit more and so on and so on. But it starts to take off the legend of the coin on the inside bottom edge, about halfway up on the bottom. It damages the coin. So what I'm going to do, um, I haven't prepared for this, let me just do that now. Is I'm just going to take the finger of a latex glove and I'm just going to put this on the ring stretcher like that and it does go a long way to protect the inside legend of that coin there we go and then we'll just start stretching moving it around a quarter turn 
each time. This will take a while, 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending. I don't want to rush it, and I will be doing at least two more kneels in the process. Then I'll come back to you. Okay, that wasn't too bad actually. It only took uh, eight minutes, something like that. And if I just take that off and show you there, the sides are almost straight. There's a slight flare. If I get my ring sizer, let's see, um, US, UK, UK on the right. Just slide that down and currently that's on a Z on that way round and it's on a oh perfect Z that way round so both sides are a Z that's going to change I'll probably knock this down by about three sizes because we've not finished with this yet um, but it's looking good and the detail has been preserved I know it still looks messy and dirty and all that sort of stuff but bear with me that is looking good and it didn't split didn't fracture but we need to make sure that it still doesn't so I'm just going to gently file down both sides and guess what I'm going to anneal it again I'm just going to take the burrs off the inside it's not a perfect job at this stage Right, we're back onto this die again and uh, the ring press. So, so this time instead of using this die as a um, press for coning, for folding, we're using it to fold the edges in and to give it a slight fat tire shape, not much. And it also is a ring reducer, this die. So we can get the ring size we want within three or four sizes in either direction. Well, in this case, because it's at the uh, large end already, it will be going downward. So I'll just put that in there, make sure it's level, and just give that a gentle press. It's because it's so thin, there's hardly any resistance on there whatsoever. That's the first press. Oh, I haven't turned it around, I've turned it around by uh, 45, I've turned it around by 90 degrees now. Put it back in and give it another press. lovely and then we'll turn it over and do the same thing perfect now I need to step down a size you don't always have to go down sizes depending on what size of ring you're aiming to get so gentle press you can just see that edge now beginning to nicely fold in and that edges are still a bit rough, so we'll do that one. Yep, yeah, that's now starting to get a wedding band shape to it. Feels a bit rough on the inside edges. I'll have to deburr that again soon. Put that back in. That's nice. It's starting to get a fat tire look on one side. So I need to just turn that over. Getting there. Just one more little go, I think. Wow, that is beginning to look really nice. Now, let's check what size it is. It was a Z, if you remember. Um, US, UK. That is now down to a U stroke V. That's my wedding ring size. Beautiful. Now, other side. The other side is a T and a half to U. 
so that way it's slightly bigger so I'll do one more press on that side very gently so a lovely fat tire wedding ring slightly slightly too tight for me but that will change as soon as I file in file out the insides so slightly too tight now means it'll be a perfect fit when I do the insides just file them gently off and I'm going to do that now right well that's what it looks like now that it's virtually finished well, all we need to do now is to give it a really good shine now one thing I do recommend if I give this a really nice shine and keep it shiny because silver for some reason unlike gold does go a little bit dull even in one day just wearing it so you know get some you know, proper proper jewelry cloths like this one or your own equivalent doesn't matter what you can even use one of these this is a buff shine and file and smooth nail block um, only use the shine which is that blue side on mine not sure it'll be on yours and you can see how dull that is now even though it's finished it's dull and now if I just do this you can see just how much that really comes up absolutely beautifully now stay tuned while I finish this off and shine it all up because I'm going to give you a really good close-up of this and then I'm going to tell you how you can win it. Well, that whole exercise of turning that little metal coin thing from the Olympic 72 into a ring was brilliant. I've tried making a video twice before using a Victoria Florin and I had to abandon the project because the silver split on the second press as I was folding. So I am overjoyed this has just actually worked out pretty well. You saw it at the beginning which it looked like this and it's now finished looking like that and it is now a size T and a half to you that should comfortably fit a T and a half and also fit a U so it's probably going to be a ring for a man ring. now I'm going to give this away what do you have to do to win it it's simple in order to win this you only have to do something which is easy to do and it's free and only requires a minute bit of effort because YouTube is a two-way street I will give you stuff if you help me now I can't guarantee you will win but I will randomly select somebody and give one of these away not one of these but a ring away every month through 2017 if this one for 2017 January works if it works I'll be giving one away every month and some more wall charts later as well watch out for that so what have you got to do easy the first thing you've got to do is to like the video the second thing you can do is simply leave a comment on why you would like to win this ring and thirdly I would ask you to share this video I'm gonna give somebody at random this ring who has liked commented and shared now when am I going to draw it it's fair enough to say that I've not given this a great deal of thought so I'm probably going to draw this out in the first few days of February and I will make an announcement in one of my videos or um, I will just post a notification on the comments in the video but you can be sure somebody is going to get this I hope it's you I hope you will like comment and share and if you haven't subscribed yet then please do so look I'll catch you later thanks for being with me I'll see you soon. Making videos for you because he's a YouTube creator. Oh, oh, oh. Always
filming and editing scenes Ready to watch on all your screens New videos every week so please subscribe Catch you later